Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers, the Common Sense MD, coming to you for the weekly podcast. I'm going to talk to you today about something fairly esoteric, but kind of important. Um, you know, it's something you probably ought to know. A little knowledge is good, I guess. You know, sometimes when I see patients, a little knowledge for them it can be dangerous. And, and what I mean by that is some patients tend to obsess on the minute details. They actually read the Internet too much, and it causes them to worry a lot. Now, this is a particular type of personalities. And, you know, being a family doc for 38 years, you see this fairly often. And, you know, the more you practice and the more you, the older you get, the more honest you are with people. So in my old age, I've become pretty honest with people in a kind way, an empathetic way. Um, but a lot of times it really hurts them, you know, because they, they worry about the minutest details of everything instead of looking at the big picture and what's really important, like living their lives. You know, I have a lot of people who just worry about every little thing. I even had one guy came in one time with his wife, who was the patient, and he had a detailed description of every bowel movement she took for the last year. You know, and she was kind of bewildered, and that's that's kind of overprotective. That's overdoing it. And I'll be honest with these people. I'll say, look, you're overcooking your grits a little bit here. Let's focus on, you know, you weigh 300 pounds and you're worried about the RDW measurement on your red blood cell count. Um, let's get real with it. Come on. Let's let's talk about what really is important so that you can live your life and be happy. Anyway, I'm digressing, but the reason I brought that up is because um, this is kind of minutia because most people have never heard what I'm going to talk about today, but it is kind of important because it really relates to a medicine that I like to use a lot that I think is tremendous. Um, it's called methylene blue. And I've done podcasts on it before, and I'll probably do an updated podcast very soon on methylene blue, the, the wonders of that over-the-counter medicine, really. It was actually the first medicine known to man back in the 1860s. But anyway, so today I'm going to talk to you about something different, though. But it ties into that. Um, it's called G6PD deficiencies. You know, for my patients that come in, they'll know I check that a lot on their blood test. It's a one-time test only. And it's real important for a few reasons. I don't see a lot of positive with it in this area. I just don't. So, you, you know, it may be overkill to check a lot of people for it. But for others, it may be very important. It's really an inherited condition. It's, in fact, it's the most common human enzyme deficiency in the world. There's over 400 million people worldwide with this enzyme deficiency, and I'll tell you what it does in a minute. But And it's mostly men because it's an X-linked recessive trait. You know, the men have an X and a Y, so if they get an X that's got it on it, they're going to get it or carry it. Now, the women have two Xs. So they may have one of the genes, and they may carry it, but they won't manifest the disease itself. So, and anyway, so um, most of the people that have this are really of, of African descent, Asian, or Mediterranean. Um, I've seen very few cases of it in my career, you know. And again, um, there's different levels of it, you know, the different penetrances of it. So... A lot of people may have a mild case and never know it. In fact, most people that have this will never know it. But um, it's kind of important in a lot of ways. It's a dirt cheap test to get. And it may affect some things down the line and what medications I use and maybe even what food you eat. But anyway, this enzyme helps red blood cells work. They're kind of the housekeepers for the red blood cells. And, of course, red blood cells carry oxygen to all your tissues. Um, it protects them, these red blood cells, against harmful substances. Um, without enough of this enzyme, this G6PD enzyme, your red blood cells don't have the protection from oxidative stress. That's something we talk about a lot is oxidative stress. And that's where your body's antioxidant defense system 
can't control the free radicals. Think react ROS, reactive oxygen species. Um, antioxidants are natural substances in foods, vitamins, and minerals. That's why I really push minerals and vitamins and good eating habits. Now, free radicals are formed just by living, activities like breathing, but other activities like environmental toxins and factors like smoking, stress, big, big producer of this, infections, certain foods like sugar, um, and medications, which we'll talk about. Uh, so in G6PD deficiency, the red blood cells can get overwhelmed by these free radicals, and they start breaking down, and it can cause what's called hemorrhagic anemia. Um, you can see this in, in rare forms in kids. It can be really serious in, in infants and newborns. Uh, they get jaundiced. But um, in any event, triggers are important in this. And they include certain medications, infections, stress, like I said. But the most common trigger, unbelievably, is eating fava beans. Have you ever heard of fava beans? Um, I'm not sure if I've ever eaten them, but they're more common overseas, I think. But they're called broad beans. They're in the pea slash bean family. They kind of look like lima beans, but they're not lima beans. Um they're bigger than lima beans, and I think a little darker. Now, they can be nutritious, but they can also be really bad for people that have this enzyme deficiency. Um, so other things that might be related as far as foods, soy, red wine, blueberries, which are very healthy otherwise, um, tonic water, and camphor. That's interesting, isn't it? Um, medications that can trigger this hemolytic anemia if you have this particular inherited enzyme deficiency include the antimalarials like chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, um, methylene blue. Those medicines come from methylene blue. Um, sulfonamides, aspirin. High-dose IV vitamin C. That's why if I ever give somebody high-dose IV vitamin C, which I do daily, I always check a G6PD test on them beforehand. Um, it's ironic because a low dose of IV vitamin C is actually good for these people with that enzyme deficiency. Um, non anti-inflammatories can affect it also. And I think I said soy. I'm not a big fan of soy anyway. Now, so say you had a reaction, what would your symptoms be? Rapid heart rate, shortness of breath, dark urine, fever, fatigue, paleness, think red blood cell count, hemolytic anemia, and jaundice. So those are, those are some things that you look out for. Again, this is rare, but it needs to be looked at, especially if you're going to use some of these medications that we use that are so helpful for other things. Um, and it may be important, too, to know if you have this genetic enzyme deficiency because of your, your, you know, your inheritance, your kids' kids and all. So it's pretty nice to know. And it's a one-time dirt-cheap blood test you can get. I run them every day in my office. Well, so what's the treatment when you trigger this thing off if you do have this? You remove the trigger for the first thing. Stop the trigger. Uh, most people recover on their own. Um, and if it does progress to a severe hemolytic anemia where you get jaundiced and you get really sick, you may need oxygen. You may need a blood transfusion. Again, knock on wood, I've never had to do this on a patient. But it's, it's kind of important to know. And it's, it's, it's dirt cheap test to get. Um, most people that have this never have any symptoms at all. Like I said before, there's a huge range of deficiencies. If you have a severe deficiency, you're more likely to, to have this problem. Um, but it's important to know if you have this inherited condition. The simple blood test will tell you so you can avoid the triggers for this G6PD deficiency. Now, I'm going to talk a lot in the future about methylene blue. And that's the main reason I'm doing this. And also high-dose IV vitamin C, which is so important for a lot of people with specific conditions. Um, and we'll go into that later. But So think about getting a blood test for G6PD. It's a real 
inexpensive, interesting test to get. And if, if you use methylene blue, you probably ought to have this test. And I'll go into more of the details on methylene blue. And I'll try to throw a link up here to what I've talked about methylene blue in the past because it can be a game changer and an incredible um, substance for a lot of people, especially with post-COVID long haulers. We're using a lot of it and having tremendous results. Plus, all the neurodegenerative diseases can benefit by methylene blue as well as a host of other things. So stay tuned for that. So I hope this helps you. Um, don't get bogged down in the minutia. Let me do that and bring some common sense to you. I think that's my job as a family doc. I hope this helps. I'll see you next week. Thank you.